and will not be beneficial, except those amongst them who are given permission by Allah and intercede for those whom Allah is pleased with their actions. Even angels cannot intercede for a kafir, cannot intercede for a mushrik. No, no one can, can intercede for a kafir or a mushrik. And even angels, when they want to, to intercede, it has to be after the permission of Allah. Okay. <coughs> And then the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ اِدْعُوا الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ This is a general verse which means uh, supplicate or call upon those whom you claim to be your supporters rather than Allah. They don't own any atom of uh, any atom of thing, yani. they don't own anything, neither in heavens nor on earth. They don't own anything. And Allah is making it general. He's saying, uh, all those, yani, whoever you want, angels, prophets, they own nothing. And also this shows that the author is considering this act a worship. Yani, seeking the intercession in, uh, in this way is a worship. And in the way that the people nowadays who are doing with their engraved uh, so-called uh, saints or whatever, and they, they seek their intercession. Actually, the ones who worship the graves nowadays, unfortunately, they surpassed this uh, this uh, area of intercession now. They surpassed it. <coughs> yeah, I mean, what, what do they want from the saints who are in the graves? They don't want intercession anymore. They went beyond that. They think that those so-called saints have been given the authority by Allah to run the affairs of this universe. Yani, yani, as if saying, Allah has turned them into lords, into gods. Because no one has the authority to run the affairs except Allah, except the Lord. Delegation. Huh? Delegation. What is delegation? You call it That doesn't Delegation, uh, what the saints come from? Delegation. The saints are men and women that the church picked. Mm -hmm. based on a recommendation of a priest or a bishop and then it goes before the house of bishops and the house of cardinals mm -hmm. and then they look for three miracles and miracles are like statistics the way that they look at it because you can take the same statistics mm -hmm. and make it say one thing and use the same numbers and make it say something else mm -hmm. it just depends on who's crunching the data right. and if enough people think that it's popular they will not waste time in making them saints. Mm. And I guarantee you, within the next 15 years, Mother Teresa will be deemed a saint wow. under the rules that they come up with for saints. Mm. Yeah, they have something like this also, those grave worshippers who call themselves Muslims. They have their own measures, okay? Uh, they claim that every year, 77 saints meet either in Hay Sayyid Zainab or near Al Hussein's grave, okay, and they decide the affairs of everything, even the birds, what to eat, what not to eat, so when to Sophie? die, when Sophie's? not to die. Yeah. Sophie's? Yes. Yes. And also she has. 77? Uh, Ahsan, 77 and 44, some of them, instead of 77 saints, some of them say no, 44. Okay. Has anyone seen these saints there? Oh. It's all an imagination, it's all a delusion, it's all the, uh, <laughs> the, the devil playing with them like uh, the child playing with a ball, you see. You say every year? Uh, every year. <coughs> they meet, okay. 
And those 77 decide everything in the universe. Then God does nothing. Alas. They are gods. And the Shias, as Khomeini said in one of his books, he said, وَإِنَّ مِنْ ضَرُورِيَّاتِ مَذْهَبِنَا أَنَّ لِأَئِمَّتِنَا عَلَيْهِمُ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا وَدَرَجَةً سَامِيَةً لَا يَبْلُغُهَا لَا مَلَكٌ مُقَرَّبٌ وَلَا نَبِيٌّ مُرْسَلٌ وَأَنَّهُمْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامُ تَخْضَعُ لَهُمْ جَمِيعَ ذَرَّاتِ الْكَوْنِ He is saying, it is one of the necessities of our beliefs, meaning the Shias, his, his type, of course, because Shias are a group study. We cannot uh, do injustice to them. They are not one group, but his group, okay? That it is a necessity of our belief to believe that our Imams have a special position which no angel has reached and no prophet has reached, no messenger has reached, and that they, meaning so-called Imams, all the atoms of the universe are under their control. If the under the Imams control? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, the same with the Sufis, not all Sufis, because uh, Sufism also is uh, Sometimes just some innovations in worship and not uh, يعني, reaching this level. Yeah. We cannot do injustice to them. This is a new claim or uh, old no, claim about the 77 to 44? I did it years ago. Well, I, يعني, maybe in the late uh, <laughs> 300, 400 years, but uh, يعني, it's an old claim also. And they have it, and they have so many claims. Sufis have so many claims. They claim that the wali can go and visit Allah. Okay? Like. Uh, one of them has written in his book uh, that uh, Abu Yazid, one of their so-called uh, walis, he went to visit Allah. And when he came near his throne, he didn't see Allah. So they, he asked, he said, where is Allah? They said, Allah has just left to visit you in Baghdad. <laughs> That makes about as much sense as he's saying. He didn't tell that. When I was in Vietnam, I went to visit Shaitan. I saw him at his door. I smelled the brimstone of the hell. And I've seen the dead bodies as I went there. And I'm just describing what I saw when I walked through a field after being napalm. I can say I felt the heat. Did I go see Satan? No. Same thing. Makes as much sense. Yeah, but this is even worse. Yeah, he is good that Allah did not know that he wishes yeah, yeah, yeah. to know that he's coming. Yeah, I mean, this is a big insult. Uh, <laughs> so if Allah did not know, yes, yeah. maybe he just left because he didn't want to see him. <laughs> it's such madness. Kind of madness. This must be a small figure. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They have so many, so many yani, claims like this. Yani. They say, نحن معاشر الأولياء خذنا بحرا وقف الأنبياء بساحل. That we, the saints, have reached so great position in knowledge that compared to us, the prophets are nothing and the messengers have nothing. We are deep in the ocean of knowledge where the prophets are on the shore. Just being witted, you know, by some water, you know, that was the water of knowledge, of course. And they have so many claims like that. And he, uh, <laughs> How can you make a mosquito? The uh, uh, one of them claims that all the wallies before him under his foot, okay, and the wallies before him are the prophets and the companions, everyone, and the angels. They are wallies of Allah. They are, uh, yeah, uh, uh, beloved, uh, uh, يعني, uh, beloved worshippers of Allah. This is the meaning of wali, a beloved worshipper of Allah. The one who does good, the one who has the right faith and does good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا إِنَّ أُولِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ وَأَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ That the uh, beloved uh, friends of Allah, 
This is the meaning of Wali, the beloved friend. Uh, are, have nothing to fear. And who are they? Allah says, the ones who have the right faith and do the right action. So pious people. So if we see someone who worships fire and he says, well, I can do a miracle, I can put fire in my mouth, I can put a knife here and bring it out from there, so I am a saint, okay? We tell him, you are a big liar. You are worshipping the fire. You are the furthest from being beloved friend of Allah. You are not worshipping Allah. You see? By that definition, every illusionist and magician is a saint. A magician, yeah. He is doing miracles. And all they're doing yeah. is just sleight of hand. Right? Yeah. That's what uh, Ahl Sunnah told those people. That by your definition, the one who does miracles, that means the magician is a saint. Even shaitan becomes a saint. The devil himself becomes a saint. He has some powers that, are, that no one can do. Okay. So this is regarding uh, this shafa'ah uh, or intercession. And alhamdulillah, uh, Abu Hurairah anhu said, I asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who is going to be the most happy with your intercession? Who is going to be the most happy person amongst the people with your intercession? He said, those who say la ilaha illallah purely from their heart. Meaning those who were truly worshipping Allah alone. So <coughs> that shows that those who commit great shirk, who did not say it purely for Allah's sake, even if they say it by their tongue, they don't deserve this shafa. They don't deserve it, you see. Even if they think they deserve it, and that uh, they don't deserve it. Actually, those great worshippers, they don't only believe that they deserve the shafa'a. No, I read in uh, one of their books, uh, which is called Ghawth al-Ibad, by Abu Mustafa al-Hamami. Uh, someone in New York gave me that book in 1973 or something like that. Okay, he was distributing it. Okay. He was a big grave worshipper, yani. So he gave me that book, and I, I was astonished to see what's in it, really. I was astonished. Yani I said, yani Muslims can reach this level? And they, they call themselves Muslims? Yani in this book, he said, he not only said, uh, yani, uh, uh, supplicating to the walis in their graves is good, and sacrificing animals to please them is good, and all that. No. He said, all those who do those actions, if we were to consider those actions to be wrong, he says, for the sake of argument, Allah will forgive them definitely and will forgive all sinners. Even if they don't repent? Yeah, 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 yeah. No condition. The repentance, we say anyone who forgive, uh, repents, Allah will forgive him if he repents. Even if he repents from kufr and shirk, Allah will forgive him. But those people say without repentance. Yani, you commit all kinds of shirk, and he doesn't consider them shirk, of course, but he says, for the sake of argument, let's say these are wrong. But we trust Allah, the most merciful, that no one will enter hellfire from this nation. Yani, no, that should attract a bunch of atheists. What's the difference, brother, between this? That, that should attract a bunch of atheists. No, no. no. Between that this and Christianity. God that agrees with them. What's the difference between this and Christianity? Well, they say Jesus is the Savior. It's the same thing. As a matter of fact, Christianity is better than this. At least you well, are, you have you to are repent. seeking the intercession of Jesus. <laughs> then and you those have to people... repent in order to get into heaven. <laughs> you know, with no repentance, huh, that should attract a bunch of atheists. No, the Christians, as I heard from them many times, 
and as in, in the song that I remember from the 70s, uh, which I mentioned here several times, يعني, they say, I'm not a sinner if I have a friend, if I believe that I have a friend in Jesus, because he will recommend us to the guy in the sky, Allah. Okay? That, that song, what they mean by that is that if you, you don't have to worry about your sins, if you repent, then you'll get recommended. But he didn't but mention repent at all. There, all right, there's a whole lot of things Christians don't mention that's implied. Mm -hmm. But repentance is one of the things you're supposed to do in order to get forgiven. Mm -hmm. You have to repent. You can be a sinner up to the last second of your life mm -hmm. and then repent and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do anything to show you repent, just you know, say it. And to me, that, that's a little bit more, that, it doesn't show any proof. Mm -hmm. All right, you, you have to do more than just say, mm -hmm. all right, I'm sorry, that, mm -hmm. that's not enough for me. No, it's not enough. In Islam, repentance has three conditions. One is to uh, feel sorry and bad, really, in your heart, okay? And second is to uh, uh, stop the sin immediately. And the third is to promise not to ever go back again to the sin. And then there is a fourth condition, and that is, you do it before it's too late. Yeah, and when you are about to die, and you know that there is no well, way I'm out of this. about to die is in how they pray, and as soon as yeah. they're safe again. No, no, you it's cannot It's a whole repent. different thing. I've seen that yeah. a lot. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. But this, when, when someone is about to die, meaning that he feels his soul is being taken out of him, you see? Not, for example, in an airplane where everything is about you know, chaos and all that, that you don't know that's going to crash or not. But, but uh, when the soul يعني, will be taken gradually from the human. And if you sit by a, a person who is dying, you can feel it. You can touch his foot first. That's where the soul will leave first. And then it will g keep going up, 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 until it leaves. I know there's two it's conditions the around people that are dying. They're either at total peace with themselves or they're extremely afraid. Yeah, that's another and thing. And there's no in between. They're either totally at peace or extremely afraid. That's because of two things. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the person is about to die, when the soul is being pulled, then he will see from far, as far as his sight can go, angels. The case of the faithful, he will see angels in a beautiful shape, with a beautiful coffin, with a beautiful smell prepared for him. So he will be willing to die, and he will be pleased to meet with Allah. Okay. And the other one will see the opposite. He will see two severely ugly looking angels with fire in their hands and this is your coffin and with bad smell so he would say you know he would so be feeling and say uh, I wish I you know never die yet you see because if I die no that's it this is my yeah, thing so that's why yeah, you want, uh, as you mentioned it's either this or that yeah there's no one between yeah no no you, uh, at the final minutes? No, no, no. And things, that, the hereafter will start for the person at that moment. You see? Because even when they should be in a lot of pain, that look is on their face, that peaceful look is on their face, it's like they should be hurting, but they're not. Hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, regarding this hadith of Abu Hurairah <coughs> that the intercession cannot be for those who say La ilaha illallah by their tongues and yet they are committing shirk.
Okay, we have uh, one uh, next week. You're gonna be here, Bilal, also, yeah. brother Michael. I'll be here. Okay, so inshallah we'll uh, do the chapter on regarding the rule of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and later on, inshallah, when uh, you decide, we'll uh, go back to the sequence. Do you see the two angels? No. Is that, that's not the... Um, yeah. An angel, you'll see an angel carrying a uh, coffin and with a good smell. That's just before the final moments of pulling the soul. And the soul would be already start. and the pulling would be already started. Okay. I remember when I heard Years when I first became, okay, I can't remember how how I heard it, but is it true something about the soul? Well, that it'll be taken out in a different manner for the bad soul. For the believer, it will soul. be easy to pull his soul out. It will come out smooth. Why? Because the man is happy when he sees the angel so in that smooth. shape. So the soul will be just in one place and it will be taken easily. The non believer. Because he'll be so afraid, his soul will try to escape and fill everybody, every place in his body. So the angels will pull it from all his body. Okay? Like the Prophet ﷺ gave the example of thorn in wool. How to pull it, you see? Mm. Yeah, and you have a big area of wool with all kinds of thorn in it and you come and pick it up strongly and you see the soul is it um does it go straight up first to the heavens or through the heavens or something the soul of the believer will be welcomed in every yeah, yeah. one after another the angels of the first heaven will say who is this soul uh, they, say the, they would the say name, the soul the was known as. of for example brother bilal mm -hmm. they 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 will welcome it and they say, MashaAllah, he's a good person, such and such. So they'll follow him until the next heaven. Mm. And the next heaven will ask them again, who is this soul? And so on, until they reach the seventh heaven, above which is the throne of Allah, above which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah will order the angels who are in the seventh heaven, that take it back to, the to, to its body. Oh, to its body. Yeah, because... Does he get the book first? Huh? Well, not at this, at this stage. The book? Like your book in your left hand. No, that's in the resurrection. The so this that's on the day of judgment, yeah. in the resurrection. Okay. So the, the soul will be brought back so that two angels will come and make him sit down and ask him. Is that monk, monk and the fear? Okay. And then... It will be taken back to heavens, either in paradise for the believer or in hellfire for the kafir. And this is the punishment of the grave or the pleasure of the grave. You see, yani the believer could be in heavens in the grave, not the same paradise, but beautiful it's thing. Widespread in the window. The Prophet ﷺ said, for the believer, when he passes the test and he says, my uh, God is Allah, <coughs> and the one yani, who deserves worship is Allah, and my messenger is Muhammad, and my religion is Islam, then the grave will be widened for him for as much as the sight can go, and not only widened, uh, widened but lightened. And not only lightened, but a, a gate will be open between him and paradise, so he will smell the nice smell of paradise, okay? And not only that, his soul will be taken and hanged on a tree in paradise. Okay? And that will be the position, but when Allah wants to make his soul come back to the body for some reason, he will allow it. Okay? So this is the situation with the believer as described by the Prophet 
and also in the grave he will see his position in paradise. He will see his palace, he will see his wives, he will see his position. And that's why he will say, Oh Allah, make the day of judgment soon. <laughs> and he will be told, stay calm and sleep like a new wed uh, newly wedded woman in her first night sleeps. Okay. And she will be sleeping so happily, supposedly, Annie. So <laughs> you the first night, I don't think her husband's going to let her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe second night, but first night, no. Yes. Because if he's true Muslim, he's been waiting for that night, too. I don't think she's just going to go, good night, honey. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> So this is uh, the case, yani. but the uh, unbeliever will see everything opposite. Yani. You see, the grave will be so tight on him that you will hear the crash of his bones, okay? And it will be darkened, and a gate will be opened in his grave to hellfire. He will feel the heat and f smell the ugly, the most ugly smell, okay? And his soul will be taken to hellfire. You see, as Allah says in Quran about Fir'aun and his people, and now يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا هُدُوًا وَعَشِيًّا وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَ أَدْغِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَدَى That their punishment will be by fire day and night. And on the day of judgment, they will face the most severe punishment in hellfire. You see? So this is a verse in Quran which says, there is punishment in the grave. Because Hizb al-Tahrir, who are popular in Britain, yeah, uh, they deny that there is any punishment in the grave or any pleasure in the grave. They say, we don't take the hadith regarding this. But this is a verse of Quran, you see? And they deny many things. You see, they deny not only this, but they deny a lot of things. What do they believe there is no punishment? Politics. Yeah, politics. Khilafa, to establish the so-called Islamic rule. How could you establish the so Islamic sorry. rule based on the crooked beliefs that you have? You see? They reject what is called Hadith al-Ahad, the Hadith that is narrated by either one or two or three. Okay? Even if it is agreed upon by all scholars of hadith, Bukhari and Muslim and others, they, they say, no, we don't take hadith al-Ahad in our beliefs. Okay? And uh, hadith al-Ahad constitutes 95% of the true hadith or more. So in 